Exodus 33. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, Go, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, To your seed I will give it. And I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst because you are a stiff-necked people, lest I consume you on the way. Then the people heard this sad word and went into mourning, and none of them put on his ornaments. So Yahweh said to Moses, Say to the sons of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. Should I go up in your midst for one moment, I would consume you. So now, put off your ornaments from you, that I may know what I shall do with you. So the sons of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, a good distance from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought Yahweh would go out to the tent of meeting which was outside the camp. And it happened whenever Moses went out to the tent, that all the people would arise and stand, each at the entrance of his tent, and gaze after Moses until he entered the tent. And it happened whenever Moses entered the tent, that the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and Yahweh would speak with Moses. And all the people would see the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, and all the people would arise and worship, each at the entrance of his tent. Thus Yahweh used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, and his attendant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Then Moses said to Yahweh, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you yourself have not let me know whom you will send with me. Moreover, you have said, I have known you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. So now, I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight. See also that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not lead us up from here. Indeed, how then can it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not by your going with us, so that we, I and your people, may be distinguished from all the other people who are upon the face of the earth? Then Yahweh said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Then Moses said, I pray you, show me your glory. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of Yahweh before you, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Then Yahweh said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand there on the rock, and it will come about, while my glory is passing by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. John 12 Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, and Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a litre of perfume, a very costly pure nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, who was going to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? Now he said this not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to take from it what was put into it. Therefore Jesus said, Let her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Then the large crowd from the Jews learned that he was there, and they came, not because of Jesus only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. But the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also. 
because on account of him many of the Jews were going away and were believing in Jesus. On the next day, the large crowd who had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him, and that they had done these things to him. So the crowd, who was with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to bear witness about him. For this reason also the crowd went and met him, because they had heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now there were some Greeks among those who were going up to worship at the feast. These then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and began to ask him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip came and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul has become dismayed, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it had thundered. Others were saying, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice has not come for my sake, but for your sake. Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was about to die. The crowd then answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ is to remain forever. And how do you say, The Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, for a little while longer the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke, and he went away and hid himself from them. But though he had done so many signs before them, they still were not believing in him. So that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason they could not believe. For Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes, and he hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart, and return, and I heal them. These things Isaiah said because he saw his glory, and he spoke about him. Nevertheless, many even of the rulers believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him, for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory of men rather than the glory of God. And Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me does not believe in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me sees the one who sent me. I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him on the last day. For I did not speak for myself, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore the things I speak I speak just as the Father has told me. Proverbs 9 Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. 
She has slaughtered her cattle. She has mixed her wine. She has also prepared her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the tops of the heights of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks a heart of wisdom, she says, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake your simplicity and live, and step into the way of understanding. He who disciplines a scoffer receives disgrace for himself, and he who reproves a wicked man receives injury for himself. Do not reprove a scoffer, lest he hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give knowledge to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Make a righteous man know it, and he will increase his learning. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will become many, and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself, and if you scoff, you alone will bear it. The woman of foolishness is boisterous a woman of simplicity, and does not know anything. She sits at the doorway of her house, on a seat by the high places of the city, to call to those who pass by that way, who are making their paths straight. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And to him who lacks a heart of wisdom, she says, Stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he does not know that the dead are there, that those she called are in the depths of Sheol. Ephesians 2. And you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all also formerly conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you are at that time without Christ, alienated from the citizenship of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups one and broke down the dividing wall of the partition by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might create the two into one new man, making peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, having in himself put to death the enmity. And he came and preached the good news of peace to you who are far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, and are of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being joined together, is growing into a holy sanctuary in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit.